Let's start uh, with Microsoft, since uh, since uh, uh, Scarlett was just talking about it here, because it does seem like it's going to be representative, for better or worse, of the broader tech space overall. Hmm. I mean, this has been the driver of the market. It was last year, and to a certain extent, it has been this year here. Hmm. But a lot of that seemed to have been based on valuations that were really about hopes and dreams and the promise of something hmm. that, at least for right now, is not here. Hmm. Well, you're speaking my love language with hopes and dreams. Okay. So yeah. um, without like being company-specific, I think what's interesting about earnings of all these big tech companies right now is they represent the concentration of how we got into a dominated narrative where a few companies are, are really leading the discourse around innovation, alternative um, ways of doing business, and what the ecosystems need to um, produce this new way of, of being in an emerging economy that more and more uh, feels very much like an industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that these companies continue to be the dominant voices um, and, and so have dominated performance and earnings within the S&P 500. Yet when you look at them using traditional valuation methods, it would seem that they are overvalued by a lot. Um, mm. P-E ratios kind of have them trading up here while the S&P 500 is down here. You've talked about moving on from P-E ratios uh, to price to innovation. Is that the same thing as the PEG ratio? Mm -hmm. price well, to you know, yeah, what I'm suggesting is that we expand our thinking, including our existing toolkit, to add a different possibility that as we're innovating into this new territory of innovation, which is AI, mm -hmm. um, which um, will have a dramatic impact on, on how uh, humans work, um, it's a cost savings, productivity enhancing revolution that I refer to as the co is this is a cost cutting bull market that we're beginning. Every bull market kind of has its own flavor and this one is about productivity enhancement. And so when we think about Beyond price to earnings ratios, we have the PEG, price to earnings growth, which then accommodates for a higher PE that then can be, uh, the valuation can be sort of modified based on a growth projection of, of a company. Okay. That's based on an existing product or activity that then is expanding and growing. Innovation, though, by definition, if you like look it up in a, you know, in a dictionary, is the idea that something that hasn't been here before becomes something of tomorrow. And I'm not quite sure that we fully price and what that could be. But how do you do from an, that? I know. I mean, because we're talking about a hypothetical. Yeah. And I remember, I don't know if it was a couple mm -hmm. years ago, yeah. uh, who, who, who sort of really shepherded this, but there was yeah. a lot of talk about intangibles in terms to of what yeah. was on the balance yeah. sheet and how it wasn't really reflected there mm -hmm. because of the way of accounting. And obviously, intangibles are a little yeah. bit more tangible than well, what you're talking about. But it's still the same concept. Well, it's the same concept, yeah. but I mean, listen, I'm a math and science investing person as a portfolio manager. Yeah. Right now, my bigger message to investors is to really focus on 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 the value of the of the 493 stocks that missed out on this rally mm -hmm. in a market dominated by the big seven, a number of which that you just mentioned. And so there's plenty of opportunity in sectors like healthcare that basically had you know a flat year that's also using innovation for vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, innovation that should be earnings expansive, manufacturing industrial, these are cost saving places that people should be really focusing their portfolios beyond the capitulation trade, which is just buying the index, which is top heavy. All right, that's a very different message. The innovation part of what we're talking about is more the inspiration of really what's happening here, mm -hmm. you know? And Except that we don't have any firm numbers around that. I mean, that's no. what we're waiting for no, the math um, and in about 20 minutes is to yeah. get some firm numbers around yeah. the innovation that you talk about. And mm. there's a very cynical way of looking at innovation now these days. People yeah. don't necessarily think kindly upon it because it's mm -hmm. a job killer. Well, there's a, it's a job enhancer. Um, and it certainly is going to Yeah, eventually. But, uh, you know, remember, earnings are a moment in time. They're not a theme. Yeah. And so when we talk about innovation, we're really talking about thematics. But, yes, the math people get unended by this because it's in arrears, right? Like, this is forward-thinking activity where, where we're living in a world that most people 30 years ago couldn't even imagine. My oldest client is turning 99. I've known her for 30 years. The things that she's seen... If someone told her that someone was going to talk out of a box, yeah. it was a radio. She told me she got grounded from her mother because she was f accused of fibbing. That's what innovation is. Does that does make she, sense? Does she believe in a price to innovation multiple then? Uh, I've asked her about how come she's lived so long, yeah. and her advice to me was that you do what you can and you can the rest. Mm. And I took that to heart, meaning that 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 what, where the mind goes, life does go. 
there are lots of different corridors that we could take investors down right now. I am very dedicated to giving people the corridor of opportunity in a transformative moment of, of innovative thematics that are going to be an investor's dream for a lifetime. This is different than 2000, in my opinion. 2000, there were no earnings. This is an enable and an install in current systems with real earnings. Mm -hmm. It's a very powerful moment but, uh, well, in a I, traditional sense, well, too. But can I push back on that? Because I've heard this argument before that it, mm -hmm. it's different than the bubble because during the yeah. bubble you were really dealing with companies that had no real track record. I understand that. We had a 27 times earnings on the market, too. Right. Yeah. And I understand that Microsoft and NVIDIA's of the world, they yeah. have a, definitely a track record in terms of corporate fundamentals here. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're talking about whatever AI adds to that. And I have yet to hear one of these companies, with maybe the exception of NVIDIA, really articulate mm. the math of that mm -hmm. and how that's going to work. And, yeah. But you're saying that that shouldn't matter right now? Or? No, I'm not saying that at all. Okay. Um, what I'm suggesting is that right now, my, my central point for investors is to follow the math and science of investing, mm -hmm. despite this idea that somehow we have an expensive market. Right now, if you take the top seven stocks out, you get a P of 17. Yeah. You've got ter terrific companies that are deploying this technology, though, in a very cost savings way, yeah. in a practical way that's meaningful and has real earnings. This isn't, um, and that is the innovation as to how to yeah. cost save through the deployment of this tech, is my point.